is still buffering a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. And I'm Sydney McElroy. Riley, we're here with week two. Week number two. I'm officially on spring break. Yes, of the Max Fun Drive spring yeah. break. Riley's Max Fun Drive spring break spectacular. Yeah. So uh, thank you everyone who is who has participated so far in mm-hmm. the Max Fun Drive. Of course, that is our yearly uh, fundraising pledge drive so that we can uh, keep funding our wonderful network that brings you so many great shows as well as hopefully our great shows. Hopefully yeah. our, you know, you know yeah. our shows yeah. that we enjoy doing. And yeah. then, I mean, you must like a little bit. You're listening. Right. You haven't stopped it so far. Right. Maybe. Maybe you have. I don't okay. know. Okay. Um, but thank you to everybody. We've had a fantastic drive so far. Let's make it another great week. Yeah. A super great week because Riley's also on spring break. And I'm on my way to all your houses. <laughs> We're in the car right now. <laughs> one by one. Uh, yes. And and she's going to be very busy because we are well on our way to our goal of 5,000 new or upgrading members. Mm-hmm. So if you aren't one of those people so far and you'd like to be, if you're in a position where you could right now, consider donating to our max fund drive we're going to tell you a lot about it in this episode but just a sneak peek you can always go to maximumfund.org forward slash donate or maximumfund.org and click on donate and find out a lot more about the drive but we will get to that yeah yes yes we have some important things to discuss we do and that's music music (laughs) so you may have if you're a part of our facebook group you may have already kind of figured we were going to talk about music this week Mm -hmm. because i in the middle of the night on well, late Saturday night, I think, yeah. shared a, uh, a very special 90s teen playlist with our Facebook True group. True 90s jams. <laughs> and with, with Riley. Uh, that, that I put together with help from Justin, not just in picking the songs, because it was mainly stuff that I wanted from mm-hmm. my teen years, th- so- songs that I enjoyed at least a little or that i thought were just so indicative of of my teenage years that you had to hear them Mm -hmm. most of them i do i do like somewhat um but also i didn't know how to put that together that playlist so justin had to do that for me come on sid i really don't i could probably i could probably have pieced it together i mean i'm not like i think i'm a smart enough person i could probably have figured it out but it's not something that i've ever done before yeah so i sat there picking songs and he put them together wow and what we haven't shared yet is that Riley reciprocated. I did. I made a playlist of my own of the teen hits of today, which I will share on the Facebook group. So yes. you can go and find it. So, and we're going to be talking about some of those songs specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we get into the exact music from our respective teen eras, I wanted us first, Riley, to talk about music in general in in Mm -hmm. terms of like how you listen to music and and what we listen to music on and and what kind of music you know ends up being kind of absorbed by teen culture and that kind of stuff today Mm -hmm. um because i suspect that that some things have changed yes i would say so i wasn't around back then but i would say so (laughs) so very obvious differences to start off with in the beginning of my teen years that was probably the end of the the cassette era mm-hmm. and the beginning of the CD. Era. I would say that actually the CD era started even in my like slightly preteen years. Mm-hmm. Um, but going into my teen years, I still had a handful of cassettes just because that's what I had. And I still had cassette players because at the time you would buy things that played cassettes and CDs. That is crazy. Yes. <laughs> and, and it was even when you would get a CD player, you would, still want a cassette player available because you had a lot of your music already on cassette and you didn't necessarily want to go buy the cd you know what i mean the cd version of everything right so you've seen cassettes of course yes and cds of course yes and cassettes are very cumbersome because you have to like rewind and fast forward them it's like a like a small vhs right for music (laughs) it is it's a small vhs for music right (laughs) No, it's. I mean, yes, more or less. That's that's what it would look like. It has the the tape yeah. in it, you yeah. know, and you can and it can get tangled and it can come out, and that's that must a bummer. be frustrating. Yeah, um, and it uh, um, you could, but it was cool because you could like make mixtapes and stuff mm-hmm. for people, which we've kind of talked about before, right? But it was it was frustrating to listen to because like if you had one song on a cassette that you really liked, when you got to the end of it. You had to redo it. You just rewound it to listen yeah. to it again. You had to wait 
and then kind of guess. I mean, can you imagine guessing like where does that the song start? Awful. Like you have no idea. Yeah. This is a big string of songs. You just got to figure it out somewhere. It's got to be somewhere on here. And yeah. Keep turning it back until I find it. <laughs> um, and I and and I had a lot of um, cassettes that were actually like mix cassettes. Uh, so like a bunch of different songs from like either um, a movie soundtrack mm-hmm. or maybe an era. I had a lot of those. Like I listened to a lot of like the Sock Hop and 50s. Sock Hop and 50s? The groovy 60s. See, I've noticed in your all's car whenever I'm in there with you, the stations you have like on cue right there are like 20s on 2, 30s on 3, 50s on 5. F- yeah, you skip 40s on 4 is very popular in this household. Four. Sorry. <laughs> I wonder what that was all about. Oh, I know. I did. I did like that. I really did like, um, for whatever reason, I feel like I was not the only... <sighs> of my friends and most of us most of us female who really liked 50s music and like kind of like doo-wop stuff and I like we would perform that. the song leader of the pack like in our like at our slumber I parties have that song on vinyl okay you got it for me yes taylor taylor got taylor it got me. it for you taylor got it for me so now i have well, that you just, you just totally trump me i have that song on, on vinyl, vinyl. <laughs> Not on a cassette no, called the Sock Hop in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and that, we'll go ahead and, I, that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. We'll go ahead and break into a little bit of the vinyl conversation before I kind of progress through where, mm-hmm. where I want to get to, which is to ask Riley, like, my secret question. I have a secret question for Riley. So you can't tell it to me yet? No, I'm not going to tell okay. it to you yet. Um, but before before I get to CD land, let's take a let's take a detour through vinyl okay. because vinyl predates me, obviously. Yeah, that was like mom and dad. Is it, that how they listen to music? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to sound like offensive to them. <laughs> that was before their time. No, it was back when people just like beat it out on rocks, you know, and stones. And you know. I didn't mean that. <laughs> yes, they they listen to records. That was what vinyl. Mm-hmm. Vinyl is what mom and dad listen to. And so, I mean, that's what most of the records that I grew up listening to were mom and dad's. Right. They have a lot of Jimmy Buffett records. I have their collection of records now in my room. A lot of Jimmy Buffett. There is. Um, <laughs> Every that album. Is, that is very true. They had some odd records in they there. They do. Uh, and then a lot of covers that I'd like to look at because I felt like I wasn't supposed to. Mm-hmm. You know. They know what you're talking about. Like semi-naked people. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no. I'm oh, not man. supposed to see this one. <laughs> um, but vinyl of course was around before me it was something that i didn't when i was like a teenager i didn't have vinyl yeah um mom and dad did and by the time i got to college i thought it was super cool Mm -hmm. to have vinyl so i have a lot of i still do somewhere around here maybe i passed them back to you i don't know maybe they ended up back at your house but i had a lot of records that i took from mom and dad Mm -hmm. because i thought it was like i said i thought it was like a cool thing right and i remember that there was this and i feel like it happened probably as i was starting college this like renaissance of vinyl being super cool again Mm -hmm. and new records you know stuff that was coming out then yeah would also some of it would come out on vinyl yeah, that's true now, too. Which wasn't true for a while. Right. I mean, why would you? You know, yeah. I mean, like, it, records were gone, cassettes were in, and then cassettes were gone, CDs were in. Why would you come out on vinyl? But vinyl became this cool thing, and so it still is, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a record player in my room. When I'm, like, getting ready for school in the morning, I don't even turn on my phone and listen to music. I just turn on my record player and listen to, like, a mixture of, like, two or three different albums when I'm getting ready or, like, getting ready to go somewhere, like, when I'm doing homework old stuff or the new stuff that comes out on vinyl i have a few of the new things that are on vinyl but i feel like if i'm listening to those i may as well just put them on my phone like if i'm listening to new things that i have downloaded on my phone i may as well listen to them on there but like the old ones i have like not necessarily super old but like taylor got me a rilo kylie album Mm -hmm. for christmas and i listen to that one a lot um i listen to like mom and dad's jimmy buffett records I got you a Tori Amos record. Yes, I listen to that one a lot. I'm trying to think of the name of that one. I listen to that Little one a lot. Little Earthquakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think those three, actually, are the three I listen to. Do you distinguish... Most. I think this would be an interesting question. A lot of people will say they like the sound of vinyl, mm-hmm. um, that it's more like real, more pure yeah. or something. I don't know. I would love to say that that was why I started listening again to vinyl. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, I have a record player in my office at work. Yeah. I have records at work. Um, I don't listen to them very often, but... I, I, it wasn't just like, I thought the sound was more, more pure necessarily. I, I think yeah. I'm 
Uh, I like all music, really. I, I right. just love music. I don't care what, mm-hmm. it's, uh, you know, I don't care what it's coming mm-hmm. from. Um, but it, I think I also was just trying to be really cool. I yeah. think in college, like, I thought I looked really cool if I had yeah. a big stack of vinyl. It, do, yeah. you, do you like that? You know what I mean? That scratchy I mean, kind of sound? Yeah, that vinyl I like gives? it. It's different. Do you, yeah. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, I like that more. I mean, when you're on your phone, it's just all, like, you know, digital and all, like, yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know. It's different. I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's different. Oh, it's definitely different. Yeah. Do you do you think it's better for mom and dad's music? Yeah. I mean, do I you think, think it's part of the experience? Yeah, I think especially with older music, it's made to be listened to on stuff like that. So you're supposed to be listening to it that way, and not somewhere like on digital platform. Mm-hmm. But like the music today, you're made to listen to it on a digital platform, like download it on your phone get i guess a cd of it i guess people still listen to cds maybe but i, people I, still I don't do. justin got don't. two cds in the mail today did he really yes yeah i don't listen to cds anymore but it feels different when i'm listening to new stuff on vinyl because it doesn't have that same quality to it almost because like it does because of the way you're listening to it but the way that it was made you can tell that it wasn't made to be listened to on a record player. well there wasn't a, a lot of what you're talking about probably the really old school stuff was like people you know vocals and instruments and not like a not lot like of digital like editing and exactly stuff. Yeah. like extra tracks being edited in or right. like um sound effect voice effects all that stuff yeah. like uh you know that like Cher started doing with her voice to make it sound weird and computer generated than everybody did what are you talking about you know that i don't know what that's called auto-tune Sort of, yeah. It's like an auto tune thing. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like that effect that makes your voice sound like it's coming out of a computer. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. thing. Yeah. Like people aren't doing a lot of make that. Make you sound like a robot. <laughs> yes. It make you sound like a robot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and there, you, that wasn't happening as much back when we're talking about like like Jimmy Buffett music or, right. you know, certainly like I know mom and dad had a lot of like the Eagles and mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I mean, half the albums I have of them are live recordings from concerts that sure. are not even like recorded in a studio that no. are just recorded from a concert and then they have a copy of that whole concert so they're supposed to sound kind of raw and unedited right. and that kind yeah. of yeah you're right no and that would that would lend itself better to vinyl yeah i can see that um okay well i want to get to i want to get to cassettes but before i do we need to quick take a quick break drive break drive break to talk about the max fun drive now there are a lot of great reasons to participate in the max fun drive um mm-hmm. Number one is that your donations support, you know, our shows, our wonderful yeah. network, our Maximum Fund network, our family of shows, which All is of our people. a lot of uh, quality programming that you Definitely. get to enjoy. Um, it also helps to support us and allows us to to keep um, doing our current shows and to branch out and make new shows like this one. Right. Uh, you know, the thanks to your all's donations, um, we've mentioned this on, on Sawbones as well, it's given our family a lot of extra time and ability to kind of branch out and keep expanding our line of shows yeah. which we love doing so you yeah. know thank you and your money goes to help us do that definitely um but in addition to a lot of really great feel-good reasons you also get some prizes you if get you don't things so if you are a new or upgrading member there are a couple different levels and really let me just stress this donation at any level helps yeah any dollar you can give is a huge help to us. So right. what we're going to talk about are some of our, if you become a monthly member, a monthly donating member, some of the prizes you can get. But if you can give us a one-time donation yeah. of a dollar, thank you. You're that, still helping. Exactly. Any level helps us seriously. Um, but Riley, why don't you tell us, let's say you want to become a monthly member. If you are going to donate five dollars a month what will you get you will get all of the exclusive bonus content from all of the maximum fun shows ever all of our bonus episodes that you can only hear if you donate five dollars a month and you will hear them for every show for all the years exactly and that includes the one that we did this year our with first our, mom. our first the yeah. one we did with our mom mm-hmm. um which is a great episode it's gotten a lot of good feedback people yeah. are really enjoying that so if you want to hear what all the buzz is about five dollars a month go check it out now at ten dollars a month you get get? all of that bonus content for ten dollars a month and you get to pick a bandana for the show of your choice that they were all designed by megan lynn cott and they are all there's a different design for every show and you get to pick what show you like and you get to take that bandana 
And if you want to make weird all the time, exactly. And if you want to make life hard for your mom, do multiple shows, and then she has to ask you which show she's supposed to get the bandana right. from. <laughs> I mean, we have all of Justin's shows, all of Sydney's, my one show. Which one does she pick? <laughs> it was it was hard for her. It was. Yeah, it put a lot of pressure on her. She made Dad donate two so that she could have two. <laughs> um what are you gonna get at twenty dollars a month riley at twenty dollars a month you're going to get the max fun adventure necessity kit which has a multi-tool a hot chocolate packet a paracord bracelet and camping toilet paper as well as a bandana of your choice and all of that bonus content and at 35 dollars a month you get a maximum fun thermos with a travel tumbler as well as the kit and then bonus content and a bandana of your choice so that's a super great deal. If you can, at $35 a month, you get all of that. There are also higher levels of donation. At $100 per month, you get membership in the Inner Circle, which is a monthly culture club where you Ooh. get all kinds of cool, interesting things from, from the network. And then at $200 a month, you also get free registration for Max Fun Con 2017. Um, but again, uh, we just really want to stress any level of donation that yeah. you can really helps us out. Um, if you are a current donor, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for supporting what we Thanks do. Thanks for being cool. Yes. We really appreciate it because it, it really, it, it makes us able to do this. And, um, hopefully if you are a donor, then you get to feel really awesome every time you listen to a show because Definitely. you help make this happen. Yeah. So I hope, I hope you like it. I hope so. <laughs> because you help make it happen. Yeah. Um, and again, you're helping us reach our goal of 5,000 new and upgrading members um if you if you do and we also have challenge donors by the way which i i don't think we talked about very much last time we did uh those are current members who are pledging a small amount of money it could be like a nickel or a dime or even a quarter per each new and upgrading member right so they want you to donate yeah they're in it. they donate more money exactly and that's what they want to do and that's what they because they're challenge donors it's in their dna they can't yeah, help it they can't they're help dri- it. they're driven to donate <laughs> they're born to do <laughs> So, again, if you're interested, if you want to donate to to our network, to support our family of shows, to support our program, Still Buffering, go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. Um, any amount of money that you can give, again, is so helpful. Thank yeah. you so much. If you are in a position to do so, uh, please do it. Uh, don't And don't forget, don't, don't wait. It's better to go for it, do it now. You're because thinking of it now. If you're like me, it's in your mind right now and then five minutes something else is going to be there yeah something that riley tells start me talking about music then you're gonna have to go look up that song and you're gonna forget all about donating that's exactly right that's what's gonna happen yep and riley's gonna rock your world with some new bit of teen info that mm-hmm. you're gonna think what are teens doing today so maximumfund.org forward slash donate riley yes let's talk about cds all right because at least you know what those are i do i used to have some uh used to have some yeah. see this is so cds were very much and we've talked a little bit about the cd binders mm-hmm. what we have now called cd binders cds were very much how i listened to the majority of music mm-hmm. um and it was it was a it was nice because it was a physical object so first of all you would get a cd and it wasn't just like the music that was going to be on it mm-hmm. it was looking at what the cd looked like and the cover art on it on the on the you know case right. and then you would pull out the little insert and then mm-hmm. I like if you were like me, you would read all through it to see if there was any cool stuff inside. Like yeah. one, I wanted to know all the lyrics to every song mm-hmm. so I could sing along with them. And sometimes if I just heard them on the radio or at a friend's house, it might be hard to figure out like, oh, what are they saying there? Mm-hmm. So like I would obsessively like read the entire thing. And then look, sometimes in like the liner notes when they thank people, there would be like weird little in jokes and things. And so mm-hmm. I always wanted to read those and I would I didn't get them. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't to me. Right. Like Here's an inside joke for Sydney. <laughs> You'll get this one. Because we know she's a nerd who reads this. Uh-huh. Um, but I was always so disappointed when it would just be like one like page. Yeah. Like it wouldn't like be like one a side whole front book. And back. Yes. I would mm-hmm. always be so disappointed. I wanted the whole book that I could read. But I would I would get it and I would go pop it in my CD player. Because I had this huge... I mean, that's the thing too. I don't know if you remember seeing this in my bedroom. I feel bedroom. like we used to have it like after you moved out. You did? Yeah. It was a huge CD player. Yeah, it was gigantic. It was a it was a CD cassette and radio. Yeah, and it was like the big box part that goes in the middle, and then the two speakers that flanked it, Mm -hmm. and they all would go displayed on the top of my entertainment center in my room, like above my TV. And it was huge. Yeah, and I would go and put my CD in it, 
and start it and listen to that thing over and over mm-hmm. and over again until I knew every word to every song on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, of course, I would want to give it to my friends. So that, well, I would burn so they could burn copies of it. Because right. that's what we, you know, we started learning how to do is burn copies of people's CDs mm-hmm. so that everybody could have the same CD or they would come over to my house and we would just sit there and listen over and over and stare at the lyrics to make sure we could sing them all right. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't just about having the cool music. Mm-hmm. It was about knowing everything that artist did right and that was like uh one of the songs on the playlist that i gave riley was ironic from jagged little pill by Mm -hmm. alanis morissette and that cd i had i mean backwards forwards memorized plus you would listen through to the end because sometimes after the last song like on that cd there's a secret song secret song so you would just let the last track keep playing and playing and playing and then all of a sudden another song would start dun, dun, dun. yeah and that was a common thing that would happen too uh-huh. there'd be secret songs mm-hmm. but you didn't know right until you just listen and sydney was that one person that always <laughs> listened while reading that whole book <laughs> no i could i could sing you the secret i'm not going to see sing the secret song but i am bet i'm not alone right now there are a lot of people listening who are singing that that secret alana song Either that or the one at the end of the, the Green Day album. That was another popular one. But Oh, I listen to Green Day. Yeah. But anyway, my question for you is, is that I felt like listening to your playlist, and I could be wrong, that maybe people don't necessarily, when you hear a song you like, go buy that artist's entire album no, anymore. definitely not. I mean, like, on my phone, out of the music I have that is not show tunes, other than Taylor Swift... I know that sounds weird, but Taylor Swift, I don't know, some about her. It's just like, I got to buy her whole album whenever I buy one of her songs. Okay, the whole thing. Like all of 1989, all of Red, all of it's on my phone. But um, other than that, it's a bunch of singles. Like, mm-hmm. I'll be in the shower and it's just like, I have an album on repeat from like earlier. And I go to put another album on repeat and it's like two songs. And then I have to go out and switch it because that's all I have from one person. Really? I have to like go out and switch it and put on another artist and then like change it so it's like not repeating the album so that I can actually listen to more than one song because I only have one song from every album. Why don't you just make a playlist out of the songs you well, like? Well, I did do that too. I okay. have like six playlists on my phone. Oh, okay. For like car playlist, sad playlist, dance playlist, shower playlist. Yes. Shower number two. That, see, that, um, that, uh, that never goes away. I had a shower mix uh, tape a shower mm-hmm. mix cd mm-hmm. and i now have a shower playlist uh-huh. on my phone so yeah. <laughs> i connect to that right. i understand that i i think a lot of us maybe maybe especially those of us who those of us who grew up in musical theater who like mm-hmm. to sing in the shower at the top of our yeah. lungs yeah i don't understand some it's of my friends thing. that just like they can turn on a radio station not a radio station but like a spotify station mm-hmm. like a pandora station and just go with it while they're in the shower the whole time like i have to know the words to every single song i'm singing while i'm in the shower yes like i have to be able to sing along or <laughs> else there's no point that's that is exactly that's the weird thing about a shower playlist it's not necessarily the songs i like the best no no it's, it's the, the songs, songs I can sing along to. I can sing along to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the ones that I know I sound better singing along yeah. to, which I don't know why. Like, who's listening? Definitely. No one's listening. But I feel <laughs> you. Um, so that's something interesting because I even remember, like, I, I joked about having, like, the sock up in 50s and that stuff. and mm-hmm. But I also had a lot of movie soundtracks um, that I enjoyed. Like, I, I love the Romeo and Julio, uh, Juliet soundtrack. Julia. Julia. I, I love the, the Clueless soundtrack, the... Um, there was a, a movie called So I Married an Axe Murderer. That they, it had a great soundtrack. That's mm-hmm. all you need to know. But th- those soundtracks, and then, of course, later, everybody had the Forrest Gump soundtrack. You're lying if you pretend like you didn't. Everybody <laughs> did. It was like every great song from ever in American history. Yeah. Um, but, like, I, some of my friends would give me a hard time about soundtracks because it's not true to – it's – you're not really honoring an artist was kind of the the yeah. idea like the like a real music lover would need to hear the whole album yeah you can't just pick and choose different songs you want to hear an album you're in a mood you need an album you don't right. just need a song and and i remember i was around a lot of people who were music lovers who used to give me a hard time about that i, I feel like that wouldn't exist now soundtracks um i have <laughs> i have the soundtrack from the movie that thing you do but that's just a bunch of songs <laughs> Like, it's not, like, backing music to the movie. Like, it's the songs yeah. they sing. Like, I had the whole soundtrack. That is a great soundtrack, that though. It is I, a great soundtrack. I like great soundtrack. movie. Yeah. Um, other than that, <laughs> this is going to sound silly, but the Curious George movie, 
the entire soundtrack <laughs> no the entire soundtrack was written by jack johnson okay and it's really good i really like it okay but um i have that soundtrack on my phone other than that i don't have any other soundtracks on my phone really mm-hmm. man i had now, a lot of now there are some songs i like that were included in soundtracks to like recent movies like there's Mm -hmm. a song i have on my phone that is on one of the twilight movies Mm -hmm. but i mean i heard it before the twilight movie and it just like was on that movie too i've heard one of those songs i like yeah from the twilight movie probably the same one i'm talking the love one yeah yeah well okay wait (laughs) there are probably several the one about about being together for all eternity or yeah, something yeah, yeah yeah that's the one i'm talking about because like he's a vampire right and then you know she is spoilers and then spoilers you know, nobody's ever gonna die right that's Eternal. great Eternal. <laughs> um well that's it, it's interesting because i think uh you don't see people obsessively memorizing whole albums like mm-hmm. they used to definitely and, not. and i wonder if that's changed artists behavior too i don't know i don't know because i don't full disclosure i feel like i don't listen to much current music after you giving me that playlist i feel like i'm kind of stuck in a different era of music um but i wonder if the if the artists are as concerned about making whole albums or just the hits yeah making the singles that are going to drive the sales i would say most of them are just concerned about making single songs that will make a lot of money i mean because the other thing is from your playlist i recognized almost every song from a commercial yeah i recognize that too after you said that i was like oh this one's on that commercial and this one's on this commercial that was where i'd heard most of them because i don't i would have said the radio i guess at some point in time but i don't i don't listen to the radio anymore which i guess is is another thing that was another thing we used to do not only did we used to listen to the radio um we would sit at night like at slumber parties we would have on like the local radio station Mm -hmm. and just be listening to key fm was the one we listened to around here because it was like the hot current mm-hmm. you know music of today mm-hmm. <laughs> and we would listen to that and then um actually call in and dedicate songs to people really used to do that oh yeah we used to do that every slumber party dedicate songs to boys we liked i thought that was just a thing like on the movies no we used to do <laughs> that we used to call the radio station and sometimes the dj would be bored enough at night to just like talk with us and we thought we were super cool mm-hmm. but um yeah but we used to we used to listen to the radio and then call and dedicate songs to people on the radio that sounds really fun um, I wish people still did that now. But nobody listens but no to the radio. To the radio. Do you guys listen to like Sirius? Because like um, you mentioned, yeah. I, we listen to Sirius now. Whenever I'm in the car and I'm not listening to like music off my phone, that would be where I'd listen to music on, I would say. But you're... I think if I listen to... But nobody's mm. listening to local radio. I mean, no, I mean nobody's li- not. Your friends aren't. No. Just kind of hearing whatever randomly comes on. I don't think so. So, okay. So that took... That took me through CDs. Um, And then, of course, there was like the evolution of digital music. Mm -hmm. And that was that was towards as I more so as I was getting into college. But like that was when you started to be able to get songs off the Internet, which Mm -hmm. you have to understand what a huge thing this was. This was revolutionary. Crazy. We had no I mean, that was I had no um, I had no idea how to do it. I just knew everybody was getting songs off their computer mm-hmm. and um, making making big, long, giant playlists. Yeah. Like you had this thing called a Winamp. A lot of people did where you could play music. It was like a like a pl- like a music player, whatever mm-hmm. you would have now. I mean, you wouldn't have anything now that would do this. Yeah. <laughs> just play it off the Internet. But and you would put songs on it and like you could change the skin of it. So it looked different. So you'd have different designs of it. And you'd mm-hmm. pull up your Winamp with your whole big playlist on it of all the stuff you downloaded probably illegally from the Internet. Right. Um, and th- in the beginning, it was like a free for all. Like I remember the first program that I used was something called Napster. Mm hmm. And it was totally illegal. It was all this is all very illegal. And, and it's, it was shut down. But you would just go on there and just start typing in names of songs and artists and look for anything you could and half the stuff was mislabeled so that is why there is um a cover of gin and juice mm-hmm. <laughs> that was by a band called the gourds you've heard the song gin and juice juice by Snoop dog so okay there was a cover of that by Bangle the gourds that like there's a whole generation of kids who think it was by the band fish and it mm-hmm. wasn't but it was just mislabeled on the internet for so long that's crazy (laughs) yeah but like i just remember having just endless numbers of songs that i illegally Mm -hmm. downloaded like pieces of songs and stuff that wasn't it and weird covers of things yeah it was a free-for-all but you just had it on your computer Mm -hmm. that was the only place the music existed right and you didn't have iphones 
No. And then you could burn it onto CDs, of course. Yeah. Which is what we did. So we took all the internet off the internet. We took all the music off the internet and burned it onto CDs. <laughs> personalized internet cd exactly it made all kinds of crazy mixy that's where you get you'll see um if you ever look through taylor's old cds you'll see she has like a whole bunch of um what we called like japanese mix one japanese mix two and it was us looking for different like j-pop like you know pop music from japan uh-huh. and we didn't know who it was by or what was popular or whatever it was just us getting stuff we had one called the russia mix which was just pop music from russia that we found <laughs> <laughs> um because we didn't know who any of the artists was or what we were downloading we yeah. were just downloading stuff and burning it onto cds and listening to it later that's crazy yeah i can't think of anything doing now where we wouldn't know like exactly who it was and when the song came out and what it's about and the video with it and everything like that see we would have this and you would have your win amp open and playing all the time too especially as i went into college and like in my dorm room and mm-hmm. you just trade off which are the roommates or when people came over and brought their computers or whatever. But you wouldn't have brought, well, we had laptops. There weren't a lot. Laptops were not as big at the time, but a lot of my friends did. Mm-hmm. But um, but you would just open up your laptop and start playing it from your, and you'd hear all kinds of weird stuff that your mm-hmm. friend had found off the internet mm-hmm. and who knew what it was. Or I mean, that right. was always happening. Just right. listening to all kinds of weird music that you'd never heard. Yeah. Um, But I want to talk, because we're moving into your era. Yeah. And And how you guys listen to music now. Um, but before we do that, we need to take another drive break. Drive break. So, Riley. Yes. We've talked a lot about about gifts and things that you can get if you mm-hmm. donate to the Max Fun Drive. But why else might someone want to donate to the Max Fun Drive? Because it makes you feel super good every time you listen to a Max Fun show. You can think like, "Hey, I did that. That was me." That's right. And also it helps all of us. You know, if you're listening to our show, maybe you like us and maybe you want to help us out and make, help us keep making stuff that makes you happy. Exactly. It shows that, you know, if a, a lot of, um, if you've been following the drive and, and you've been hearing things that a lot of the people on our other shows have been saying, uh, that Jesse's been saying and that uh, John Hodgman's been saying, like, if you if you like something, if you care about something, and if you're in a position to donate a little money, um, why not the thing that you like and you care about? Yeah. You know, um, you know, we, we talked about before, you know, if you if you tip your waiter because they give you excellent service, which you should, you mm-hmm. should absolutely tip your waiter. Right. Um, you know, consider it kind of a little throwing a little tip our way if you like what we do yeah. and you're in a position to do so um, because it super helps us out. Yeah. Again, to continue to create the content that we already do and branch out and make new content and welcome new people into our Max Fun family. Yeah. Um, and then also welcome you into our Man- Max Fun family right. when you become a You're uh, one of us. A monthly member. You get you get exactly <laughs> all kinds of secret bonus content that uh you don't get otherwise. Yeah. With all kinds of I think our best jokes, our best funniest goofs. The best goofs. Don't you think so? The silliest goofs. <laughs> The, the silliest craziest funniest goofs all kinds of weird stuff like justin convincing me to do an asmr episode crazy of stunts Bones. all kinds of crazy stunts mm-hmm. uh, that you wouldn't have access to it otherwise and like also some inside info on why we do the things we do and yeah. um where we come from and our background and right. like our mom told all kinds of embarrassing stories about us right so so maybe i mean maybe you want to donate but not listen to our episodes <laughs> skip over it. maybe you don't want to do that um and again, anything you can donate. We, we talked a lot about, you know, uh, all the different levels that you could do monthly donation, anywhere from, you know, 5, 10, 20, 35, 100, 200, whatever you can do. But even, you know, if you're in a position right now where you're like, I got an extra five bucks, I would really love to throw their way. I can only do it one time, but I want to show my support and just be part of this family. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. We appreciate you know? it. Um, and again, if you do that, it helps to support our shows. Uh, when you donate money, you get to pick the shows you listen to. So if you like our show, click our name. Exactly. And, and part of that goes to us. So part of it helps us keep making this stuff for you. Exactly. So the money that you're donating goes to the shows that you listen mm-hmm. to, which is super great. So you don't have to wonder, you know, I... I listen to these shows and i'd really like to know that part of what i'm doing is supporting the shows that i listen to yep you get to do that Mm -hmm. um but you are also supporting our network which is a wonderful network full of all kinds of great programming and great people um and wonderful content and uh and we you keep us going yeah so again um just to kind of review at five dollars a month you get a ton of bonus content 
ten dollars a month you get these super cool bandanas your only problem with that is going to be choosing which one you want right it's a tough decision it really is at twenty dollars a month you get the uh, adventure necessities kit at thirty five dollars a month you get the um thermos with the travel Mm -hmm. tumbler and again, at each level, you get everything from the levels below. Right. Um, there are levels at $100 and $200 if you are in such a position and you are so generous as to do so. Um, and again, thank you everyone who's already a donor. Thank you so yeah. much for supporting our network. Definitely. Um, and uh, if you are in a position to upgrade your donation, then you're eligible for all those gifts. All the cool so, stuff. So obviously, we've, we've talked a lot about new donors, um, but also people who are current donors who maybe, you know, Things are going really well, yeah. which is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Good on go you. Go you. <laughs> and you're thinking, I could go up from five to 10. Do it. Do it. Super cool. Yeah. Thank you. That's super cool. And then you get, you're eligible for all the gifts that we just talked about, mm-hmm. um, if you're able to. And you help us towards our goal of 5,000 new and upgrading members. So thank you again. Yeah. Here's what you're going to do. If you can, go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate or maximumfund.org click on donate all the membership levels are there you can pick the one that's right for you um and uh and hopefully if you can become a monthly member of our maximum fun family then you are helping to support our shows all year long and then you're one of us you're a member of our family exactly it's a gift that keeps on giving Mm -hmm. so thank you so much again maximumfund.org forward slash donate so riley yes so like i said you know i i had us back in the 90s where we were all stealing music like crazy right. <laughs> it was a free-for-all it was a wild jungle out there of mm-hmm. of illegal music downloading um and that very quickly led to you know as the evolution of technology and we were able to get music on our phones and and that i think outpaced like ipods and thing and other mp3 players pretty mm-hmm. quick you know a lot of us had mp3 players for a while i think you you even did yeah before the phone became the way people listen right. to music so how this is my secret question oh i'm ready right now if i heard a song that i liked yeah i would go buy it on itunes okay what do you do if you want to own music okay so if i want to own music yeah okay so if i want to own music i either buy it on itunes Mm -hmm. or spotify Mm -hmm. or illegally download it so people are still illegally downloading music there are apps you can get where you can illegally download a bunch of stuff yeah okay yeah. see i don't even know about that anymore because now i mean if i like a song i get it on itunes or i just do spotify why don't you guys just do spotify i guess if you don't have spotify premium then mm-hmm. you can't listen to one song you have to like make a playlist and then shuffle play it so you don't know what song you're gonna listen to and i don't know about you but I personally like, if there's one song I want to listen to, that's the one song I want to listen to. And I don't want to have to listen to a bunch of other songs. I gotcha. You can only skip so many times. I think it's just a thing of like, it's right here. It is. So you don't, see, I my Spotify, I pay for. Mm-hmm. I don't pay <laughs> so, for <mine. laughs> I have I have fancy Spotify, so I just listen to the song I want to listen to. Yeah, I don't have fancy Spotify. And what about Pandora? Is Pandora a popular thing? Yeah. Um, you can't pick songs. It's more like, I like this genre of music, so give me songs under this genre, or like this decade, or mm-hmm. stuff like that. So if you're into like new suggestions of music that you might like, mm-hmm. then that would be what you would use. I've heard Apple Music is really good. It's a thing you have to pay for every month, but it's like right in your iTunes. Um, Are a lot of your friends... I mean, because... I know as a, a as a teenager, like I would save up to buy CDs, mm-hmm. and then once music became available online, it was all illegal. So I was downloading a ton of it, but it was right. free. If I had had to pay for all that music, I probably would have been a lot pickier, yeah, a lot choosier. Definitely. Do you feel like a lot of your friends are paying for me? Are is everybody paying for music, or are they? Um, is everybody just getting it illegally still, just different places? I feel like a lot of people also buy it like with real money, mm-hmm. but I feel like itunes is such a big thing everyone just asks for itunes gift cards all the time so it's like hey you want to get me something for my birthday hey it's like valentine's day easter christmas halloween i don't know every every holiday really it's like hey it's spring break itunes gift card because then it's like twenty dollars but you can buy like some most cases i would say 20 songs so so that's that's how everybody's funding yeah okay i get it now what about youtube for music because 
and we're and like i've said before we're gonna have to do a whole episode on youtube because yeah. i very rarely other than because of justin charlie is now obsessed with some youtube videos mm-hmm. um past things i bought at sheets i really don't live <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I really don't watch anything on youtube yeah do you get mute i mean is that where you're gonna go for music yeah there are a lot of people i listen to that i like a lot that don't have songs you can download illegally or on itunes like they're not on itunes as artists Mm -hmm. so i can't buy their music there are websites i can go to where i can download their music Mm -hmm. but it's not really the greatest on a mobile phone like if i wanted to download on my computer that Mm -hmm. would be good and i could pay for it and it's like donating to them kind of yeah and i get their music um but there are so many artists on youtube that i like a lot then i'm just like hey i can't download your music so i'm gonna make a playlist of all my favorite songs that either you have written or like you've done covers of and then put it in a playlist so i can just like open up the playlist whenever i'm in the car or in the shower mostly when i'm at home because you can't always listen to youtube when you don't have wi-fi but but you're not watching them most of the time no i mean maybe the first time i watch them like mm-hmm. oh hey she just uploaded a new song that she wrote i'll go watch it and then i watch the video but right. then if it's just like after i've seen it and I just want to listen to it, and mm-hmm. now I'm not watching it. Um, that's really interesting because, it, so the first time through, you you might watch the video. Yeah, because most of the time, if it's like a YouTuber, like not uh-huh. someone like putting up a song, like an actual person like that does this a lot, they'll talk about like certain things they're doing, like at the end of the video, beginning of the video, okay, or stuff like that. And then I'll watch it so I can actually see that. But then if it's just like so random person that i won't even watch it so are these youtubes are they they're not the video these youtubes these 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 videos they're not like the sanctioned youtube video what what do you mean like who put them up well youtube youtube is everything that's on youtube is put up by like an individual person so like it but you're saying there are certain youtubers that post these videos I mean, like, and you'll and you'll look for somebody specific who posts them. Yeah, like I have a favorite YouTuber that plays the ukulele, and she just uploads like original songs that she's written, and okay. covers of songs. So you might get a song that you like, and it's somebody covering it. Yeah, oh. or there could be a song that I like that they wrote, but okay. I, they aren't a big enough of an artist where I could go down. But what about song. like the songs you put on my playlist, like the stuff that's super popular? That's just like artists like you could go and download that on itunes right and you just get those on on youtube yeah now what about the ads though now that is a thing so you just have to deal with it yeah okay. now there is a thing on youtube now called youtube red yeah i think it's no a monthly ads. thing you pay for mm-hmm. and it's no ads and it's also like there are youtube originals you now like tv and whatever but that's i mean that's not music that's okay youtube episode but but that's that's really interesting. So you might have a song that you really like, and instead of getting it from the artist who really does it, mm-hmm. you might just download the video of one of your favorite YouTubers doing it. Yeah. I wouldn't even download it. I mean, you can't download YouTube. Oh, okay. Well, no, you don't. But you know what I mean. I, I would just like, I like don't it know. or like add it to a playlist of mine that I had, like okay. a private playlist for like the shower or the car, whatever. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So would you say that's that's where most teens are listening to music now youtube i mean i'd say if you're not if you're not paying for spotify mm-hmm. and you're not buying songs you're not illegally downloading them yes okay like i was in the car today with some friends and they wanted to listen to like old stuff that we listened to when we were like little like uh-huh. elementary school and um i went on youtube and like searched for the songs and played them because it's like i don't pay for my spotify I didn't want to have to download them because they weren't songs I would listen to enough to pay a dollar for them. Mm-hmm. I also didn't have that money. And I didn't want to legally download them while I was just like in the car looking for one song. So I go on YouTube and look it up. And when you illeg- illegally download something, you want to be like at home yeah. into it. <laughs> well, it takes... <laughs> you make it worth your while. <laughs> it takes a little bit. You have to have an internet connection. Yeah. Almost positive. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that helps. Yeah. See, illegally downloading music was like this huge thing that everybody was doing. And then, of course, really quickly, the, you know, all of the music industry did not like that mm-hmm. um, and started suing kids and people started getting in trouble for it. And it was a really scary moment there for a while where they were like, oh, no, we will find you and track you down. Like, you, you are not too small, you know, mm-hmm. freshman in your college dorm. Like, we will find you and you will you will pay for this. Um and I remember there was like a, a moment where like I just stopped doing it. 
mm-hmm. because it terrified me because yeah. I, I totally and I mean, there was a kid I remember at, at the college that I went to who mm-hmm. like it was all in the news like he got caught. Wow. He had a computer full of illegal music and they, they ran it like that. Like, can you believe this kid had a whole computer full of illegal music? And it's like, we all do. <laughs> I was going to say, you'd think they had more important things, like really important things to focus their time on. Well, think about it, though. If music went from being something you had to physically own, mm-hmm. like you're somebody who makes you, you're a singer, songwriter or or you work at probably you work at the, in the music industry, yeah. you work, work at, a, you know, a company and you've got records and then you got cassettes and then there were eight tracks were something that were in there for a while yeah. but that's before me and it doesn't matter um there were cassettes and then there were cds and then all of a sudden now music is everywhere so right. people aren't gonna go buy the cd right right you're gonna yeah. own it for free now yeah so you were you're watching your profits plummet right which so I, you, I mean you got to take that serious because like the cat's out of the bag the music's out there because yeah. once i mean you know i mean that's the truth right once something's on the internet it's there yeah forever how do you ever yeah you can't pull it back right and i think i think that the internet and music you saw like a huge reaction to that yeah from the recording industry and i think that's why a lot of artists put their music on like their official youtube mm-hmm. because it's monetized so like you make money off of it through ads and advertisers being on your videos so people are having a free way of getting to it but you're still getting paid for it so you're not losing money. I wonder if that's going to make like music videos. I mean, not that they're not important or popular now, but so you're familiar with MTV. Yeah. Okay. MTV, you know, used to just show music videos. Music television. Right. I mean, that yeah. was that was what it was. Yeah. It was just a bunch of music videos with like some other stuff in between. Because mm-hmm. that's where, you know, there were VJs. Do you know what VJs? What? Do you know what VJs are? No. <laughs> You've heard of a DJ. Yeah. Okay video jockey yeah instead of disc jockey so you would have somebody like a host uh-huh. who would talk to you in between like they'd show a run of music videos and then there'd be a vj who would like talk I to you i did not know that and then there'd be more music video. well that was because on mtv and somewhat vh1 too there were just music videos all the time and then that yeah. went away and now there's like i don't know shows about teenagers or something yeah yeah that's all it is like fake reality shows and dating shows and things like that yeah okay it's it's weird because music videos were a huge thing mm-hmm. because everybody was watching them on TV together. Yeah. I guess everybody's watching them again. They're just, instead of watching them on TV together when they debut, like it's the new debut. I mean, because mm-hmm. we would know. Yeah. Like so-and-so is going to have a new music video out. We all got to watch it. Right. Instead, they're on your phone and you're watching yeah. them alone. I'd say there are a lot of times, I don't even know if a song has a music video or not. Like, I just hear it somewhere. Like, mm-hmm. it comes on, like, I guess if I am listening to, like, Pandora, like, I'm in a friend's car and they're listening to it and I like it and I download it. I don't even see if there's a music video or, like, the only time I would maybe stumble upon one is if I'm, like, looking up a song on YouTube instead of downloading it. So I'm really? just like, oh, this song is on the car. I wonder what it sounds like. And I look it up on YouTube and it happens to have a video, too. But hmm. that would be the only time I'd ever watch a video. I mean, I wouldn't go go out of my way to go look up a song that had a video and watch it. See, the video was such a, um, that, again, to reference the one that I've, we've already talked about, Ironic by Alanis Morissette, mm-hmm. you know, you watched, did you watch the video? I don't think so. I think I had it on, like, while I was in the shower. Gosh, you didn't watch the videos. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. In the video, it's her in a car, mm-hmm. and then it's her, it's four of her, like, it's different angles, so uh-huh. she's dressed in different outfits, so uh-huh. it's her in the driver's seat and the passenger seat and both of the back seats. Anyway. That was a big video when it came out, and I thought it was four different people. You did? It wasn't. It was all just her. Sydney. I'm not. I don't know. I didn't pay enough attention, I think, is my problem. Yeah. But anyway, the the videos used to be a big, a big yeah. deal. There have been a few, like, videos recently where it's, like, people are, like, can you believe this video? Or, like, this was a crazy video. Or this was great. And I'm, like, oh, I better go check it out. But, I mean, other than that, like, unless it was, like, a big deal, mm-hmm. then I wouldn't go out of my way to go look it up. It went all the way to, you know, have you heard of pop-up video? Mm-mm. This used to be a thing where you could watch the music video and they would have these little like bubbles on it that would tell you facts about the video and about the artist and about different things in it as now you watched like, it. When they like rerun like old Disney Channel movies, they do that. Like, okay. All, like high school musicals, <laughs> they'll like have pop ups and I'll be like, this scene took those many tries to film. That's There's exactly. so many costumes and See, stuff like that. They did the same thing with music yeah. videos. They were that because people wanted to know all about the videos and yeah. like because they would give you new insight. And right. some of them would be like, I mean, like 
have you ever seen the music video for thriller yeah okay so some of them are like huge like right. film like yeah you know, definitely pieces of art so have you seen the blank space music video um i watched a little bit of it it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> i watched a, it was on it was on my playlist uh-huh so yes, I watched a little bit of it. I yeah. was working while I was listening, but yeah, I mean, that's one of those videos where it's like people are like, "Have you seen this? You gotta go check out this video." Oh, but okay. Other than that, I can't think of any. I like the Nicki Minaj ones. Yeah, that's what I, the only other one I was thinking of was Anaconda. Yeah, by Nicki Minaj. <laughs> that video, a lot of people were like, "Oh my god, this video! Can you believe it? <laughs> like this is this is crazy." The the music video that I currently have seen the most often, you probably already know what it is. No. All about that bass. Oh well, yeah. Charlie loves that song. Yeah, Charlie so. absolutely adores that song. Uh, yeah. By Megan Trainer. It's and a great so video. It is, and I have seen it. Like I could probably walk you through it shot for shot can, can if you you're that? ever interested. Can you like dance it for me right now? <laughs> Hold on, let me stand up. I'm walking through the whole thing, um, because yes, Charlie was obsessed with the song, and then she saw the video, and it was like, well, I didn't ah. even know there was a video. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Yeah. <laughs> this is even better. <laughs> so, okay. Well, that's that's I. That was my big question was where do kids get music now? Mm -hmm. Because I just couldn't imagine that you were all buying it like on iTunes piecemeal every single song. No, if I did that, I would never have money ever. Right. But I, but so should I always get you iTunes gift cards? Yeah. Is that what I should? Yeah. Like on birthdays, whenever someone gets me a card, Mm -hmm. I'm like, Hey, don't even worry about getting me a gift. Give me an iTunes gift card. Or like $20. Sure. Yeah. Cause then it's just money. Um, now as far as the actual songs, that we traded Mm -hmm. so um we're gonna share our playlist there were a couple songs that i wanted to comment on that i'll I'll start with some ones that you shared with me okay first of all you shared with me a drake song Mm -hmm. that is called hotline bling yes and i was familiar with drake the artist um but largely because he was jimmy on degrassi okay um (laughs) <laughs> he and i loved him on degrassi yeah he's quite talented yeah i'd seen that music video in a i think it's like a cell phone commercial yeah yeah there was a super bowl commercial so yes yes yeah so and it was like the video mm-hmm. yeah yeah i enjoyed that i enjoy him <laughs> i think <laughs> i think he's very, <laughs> so funny he's, to me he's very talented i i, I don't listen to a lot of drake but uh-huh. i like that what what else did you did you dig for my playlist? Well, some of yours I had heard. Like I am I am familiar with Sia. Uh-huh. Uh I have I have downloaded several. Uh, actually, see, I tend to I tend to fall into old patterns. Like you I heard the album. I, I heard two Sia songs and I liked them, so I downloaded the whole album. And I gotta say, I end up listening to just those couple songs a mm-hmm. lot, and then skipping a lot of the other ones. Mm-hmm. Not that it's bad. I just I can I keep going back to the songs that I know. Um, I do think her music videos are just. Mm-hmm. entrancing the video for that, chandelier that was another one that i was thinking of like people were like you have to watch this music video or the the one with from elastic heart with yeah. shia labeouf yeah I that was shia too. labeouf and, and i watched dance moms and the girl that's in it was <laughs> from dance mom so i had to watch him that that girl from dance mom she maddie she is um she's quite the dancer she is yes she won a people's choice award did she she did i didn't know that i didn't know that i I will tell you that the song with um, Bang Bang with Jessie J and uh-huh. Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj. First of all, I do like Nicki Minaj a lot. I think yeah. she's very funny. I think she's very talented. And I, I like some of her music. And Taylor, our sister, loves Nicki Minaj. She does. She, she does. Loves her. Um, and Ariana Grande is the one that licked the donut, right? Yeah. Okay. So I know who that is. Jessie J had a song a while ago. Price Tag? Yes. That I loved. I like Price Tag. I had that on a lot of um, yeah. playlists and stuff. So I, I really like that song. So there's some pretty cool stuff. I, I have to say, most of them I was familiar with from commercials. Mm-hmm. Like um, I wouldn't. I, what was one that I didn't realize I'd heard? Um, Wake me up. Mm-hmm. Who was that by? Is that by uh, Avicii. Yeah, I, I don't know how to say. It. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like, know. That was one that I had like I had heard and I didn't realize it. Um, I think that Ed Sheeran song was the same way. Mm-hmm. Thinking out loud, I had heard it and then I didn't. I was like, oh, these are these are from commercials yeah <laughs> i hate to say that i don't want to say like they're for commercials i mean um, it's true i uh and then you, you put um you put some eminem on here which yeah. eminem you know that's something we share yeah there are a lot of songs on there that i didn't this is gonna sound awful i didn't even realize he was the 
person rapping really because there are other artists in there like mm-hmm. i think one of them has rihanna right yeah. did i put you, that you put in there? you put in love the way you yeah. lie featuring rihanna and then you also put in eminem the monster featuring rihanna hey, yeah him and rihanna are really yeah see i listen hmm. to the music parts and i don't even pay attention to the rap parts so i didn't even know it was eminem see, i just knew it was rihanna singing that's funny that's funny to me because i remember when eminem first came out when you know eminem first hit the scene mm-hmm. um his his rapping was i mean that was fairly unique kind of his his flow i'm sure it's not i'm sure i don't his know his flow anything. well you know what i mean like it, it i recognize it right away every time yeah. i hear eminem i know it's eminem mm-hmm. like instantly i know that's eminem and i it was one that i really particularly was drawn to mm-hmm. it was for me and i i don't know a lot about the world of rap music but some of the stuff that i liked instantly was eminem stuff yeah. so like it's funny because you put that on there and i was like oh, i'll always listen to some eminem i mm-hmm. like i like rihanna a lot so i like that stuff i will say that that last song you put on rude by yeah. magic i like that song it's funny because then the music video like he's asking for this dad I to let him the marry this, for that one, this yeah. daughter <laughs> and the only thing i kept thinking is uh if if a guy came first of all it's outdated you don't have to ask for somebody's hand in marriage you don't right. have to ask their parents permission that's outdated like yeah. i'm not we're not we're not cows, you know, you don't get to come ask for us, uh-huh. you know, that's a, kind of up to us. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but, uh, but the thing I was thinking is I was watching thinking if, I, if you asked for Charlie's hand in marriage and I said, I don't know. And you were like, why you gotta be so rude? I'd be like, okay, listen, this is why, this is why <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was feeling very parental. I was like, I don't know. This kid's really got to get it together. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. I approve of this whole marriage uh-huh. <laughs> either. But anyway, those are some thoughts. I, I will say overall, I enjoyed a lot of the songs. Um, I didn't know the artists at all. Like I'd heard them and I think mm-hmm. most of them I'd heard in commercial. I had no familiarity with the artists. So it was pretty cool to hear like, oh, this is what you guys are yeah. listening to. Out of your playlist, the only two songs I'd ever heard were Torn by Natalie Imbruglia, Imbruglia <laughs> and Waterfalls by TLC. <laughs> I, those are the only two songs i'd ever heard and i really wild. like torn like i think i had that downloaded on my phone that's really um, funny you yeah know, you know who introduced me to that song uh-uh. taylor really which if i mean you know taylor listens to right. like crazy punk music and yeah. stuff now um but yeah she was like an australian soap opera star who made that that one song that made her pretty famous and then that was kind of it mm-hmm. um i liked where have all the cowboys gone by paula cole did you i like that song you know what's funny is that as i was listening to that justin and i were talking about it and i was like what is it even like is she for that is she against it i don't know if this is this feminist or anti-feminist i don't even i, I just did, know I it was know. super popular yeah <laughs> um i like that one there was one other one that i remember liking a lot Oh, the one by Smashing Pumpkins tonight tonight yeah i'd heard Smashing Pumpkins before but i never heard that song that I like that one popular. a lot. Yeah. And then the only other one I liked especially a lot was Criminal by Fiona Apple. Did you? I like that song. That was one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, and that was one of those videos that I felt like I wasn't supposed to be watching. See, I didn't watch any of the videos because I turned it on while I was in the shower. That's a that's a racy video. Ooh. Yeah, that one is. And um, you should watch the video for Tonight Tonight because it's a really cool video. Mm-hmm. That was part of why I picked that one because I remember that music video being like, wow, this is a really yeah. cool one. Um. I didn't I didn't put on there one thing we haven't really talked a lot about were boy bands because the boy band I was into was New Kids on the Block mm-hmm. which I did not put on there you have heard New Kids on the yes. Block um because it was I was a little young when they were real big you know I mm-hmm. it was it was before my teenage years like yeah. by the time I got into my teenage years New Kids on the Block was kind of fading and then the boy bands that came out after that like um Backstreet Boys and NSYNC I was a little on the older end for so like I never got into that Taylor was into him but Mm -hmm. I kind of missed all the like my teenage years missed the boy band kind of craze yeah um which I I get the sense you're not into either no 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 not at all (laughs) I was gonna say not really but no not at all I mean like five seconds of summer and one direction I would say are the two most popular boy bands Mm -hmm. and I I know songs from them because they were very popular like some of one direction songs were like super popular and i know them like if you played me a song i'd be like oh that's one direction but that's it yeah like i don't listen to any of their new stuff i don't listen to any of their not super popular like this defines the band songs like i don't know any of their other songs do you guys give each other music now because that was i mean we've kind of talked about that a little bit but like i giving each other tapes and cds and 
even like mp3 playlists and mm-hmm. stuff uh, burned onto cds a lot of the time like yeah. I, we would make tapes for each other and like talk on them. like i'd make tapes for like a boy i liked and be like this next song reminds me of you because it's really goofy and, uh, and mm. things like that and then like give people tapes and stuff uh-huh. like do you guys give each other music like a I way mean, to like, share we suggest it to each other like listen to this song and then we play it for him it's like you gotta go download it or like if you like this song you'll like this song okay a lot of stuff like that but i mean there's no we don't have tangible music other than our phones like we don't have cds there are vinyls like i have one friend that we both listen to vinyls a lot like Mm -hmm. other than our phones it's mostly what we listen to and we'll like tell each other like listen to this vinyl like go to each other's houses and like listen to it but i mean other than that we don't have anything to give each other really it's really interesting yeah that's a that's a huge shift yeah but um but it's cool because i think that that with the and all the playlists will be available on our facebook group yeah. you know it's still buffering on facebook so please come join the group if you're not yeah already a part of it and you can check out our playlist um and uh i think the music still like we have like still the same kind of wide range of stuff yeah like i was listening like there's a mix there's male and female artists and there's slower stuff and faster yeah. stuff and you know i we had some rap on there mm-hmm. and then some you know some r&b and some pop and some rock Maybe a little bit of rock. Yeah, yeah. a little yeah. bit of rock. You know, a little a bit of variety. Yeah. Not a lot of country, but I think that's probably no. just speaks more to you and I's taste. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. We just I mean, neither, I personally don't listen to like rock or country. Yeah. So I didn't really put a lot of on there, but. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for this episode about music. I'm yeah. sure there's a ton more we could talk about with music. Oh, but, definitely. Um, because, it, I mean, that, you know, that defines your teenage years, right? Like the song of the summer for like your yeah. teen summer. Like you remember that forever. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, I refrain from putting the thong song on your mix because I can't stand it. But it will forever be intrinsically I've linked with like my before. teen years. <laughs> um, but... Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in. Thank mm-hmm. you for listening. We'll make all this music available for it. I mean, it's all available. Yeah. Like, it's all out there. On Riley the Riley knows where to get it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, please, if you can, consider donating to the Max Fun Drive. Please. Um, again, please. 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 Any little bit you can give. Yeah. It, it really does make a huge difference to us. Um, like I said, a one-time donation of a, of a dollar is a, is a huge thing for yeah. us. So um, if you can sign up for one of the monthly levels, anywhere from 5 dollars a month up to two hundred dollars a month depending on what you can give is awesome thank you um go to maximumfund.org forward slash donate support the shows you listen to support the network you love be a member of our max fund family we welcome you with open arms yeah um and thank you again for joining us on still buffering this week and thank you to the novellas for our theme song Baby, you change your mind. Another example of excellent yeah, music. It is, a, it is a great song. Yes, that we have hopefully shared yeah. with you. Um, this has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Swirl. I'm Sydney McRoy. I am a teenager. And I was too. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.